thank goodness you picked up. Listen, digging around here, I found this DVD that I had laying around that I think you might be interested in watching. It's about how to make a custom Xenoverse PQ or something like that. I don't know, or even where I got it, but lucky me, because you've been talking about recently on wanting to make something on this game. So, I decided to forward this to you. Hopefully you'll learn something new. So in three, two, one, sending you the video now. Ever since my last tutorial last year, I've wanted to make a tutorial that's much shorter on how to make a custom parallel quest. This will be a parallel quest, not an expert mission. You can follow this to make an expert mission, but this is mainly for parallel quests. If you want a more detailed guide, a more slow-paced one, go to the one from a year ago. But this is one that I hope to make a much shorter video out of than the last one. But let's get things started and what you will need first. The first thing you will need is the XV2 Mods Installer and the XV2 Patcher. Both of these things I'm pretty sure you guys know about, so I'm not going to go over them. You will also, you don't need this, but I would recommend the XV2 Quest Importer. The XV2 Quest Importer is very nice because you can go into the actual game and extract the vanilla parallel quest and then build a quest over that. That's usually what a lot of people do. The sample quest is nice because downloading these, it'll have just a bunch of insider info and a bunch of trivia pretty much related to making a parallel quest. Genzer and all this other stuff is nice, but you don't need any of that. So after you download the XV2 Mods and Seller and Patcher, you guys probably know how to set that up, so I'm going to skip over that completely. Now, I'm just going to assume you download the XV2 Quest Importer and then extract it to use universe directory so when you open up the quest importer it will show you all of this stuff right here main quest parallel quest expert quest all of that so what you should do is open up parallel quest and then extract world tournament tag team i recommend doing this even if you're trying to build a quest from scratch without help after you extract it to a folder most preferably on your desktop you will get six files characters dialogue position quest script script one open up all six inside of a notepad file i recommend notepad plus plus because notepad plus plus is just very stable it's nice it's clean, it's just everything you want in an editor. After opening up everything inside of Notepad++, you will notice all six files are at the top. You will most likely be starting on character.qqs. You'll notice all these columns with a bunch of numbers and everything related to that. So let's quickly, briefly go over all of these and what they do. The character is obviously just who you play as, or whoever the enemy would be here. And by the way, QXT special character, this is your mentor. Player base is you. If it has just a generic character name, it's most likely an enemy or an ally related to the parallel quest. That's pretty much all the special code that could be up there, so let's go over this this is putting a semicolon and then this would not do anything if anything type after semicolon as a rule of thumb will not matter it won't matter it won't cause any bugs so don't worry about that character is just who you're fighting or who you're playing as technically making this hum will most likely make it so it's just a random cac or your character it's really weird mst's master there's an id list out there somewhere else i'm not gonna go over that right now Costume is self-explanatory. Transformation, this is how you can make a character start transformed. 100 is Super Saiyan, 101 is Super Saiyan 2, 102 is Super Saiyan 3, 300 villainous mode, 400 is Time Breaker, 401 super villain, and then 402 is Time Breaker Super Saiyan. Those are the values that I know. I'm pretty sure there's more, but I'm not going over that right now. Special effect is, this is a super soul, pretty much. If you know the IDs, you know that. As a rule of thumb, 191 is auto dodge, 193 is super. I-12 is health bar. Making this value 32 will give them a purple health bar. You know when you lock onto an enemy and they have a health bar and it's purple? That's what that is. Making this 60 will make it to their battle damage with a purple health bar. And making this 100, if they have a negative 1 value here in this health column, this will make it so their health is in the blue color. Level self-explanatory. Just keep that at 1 if you are adding your character specifically. F-24, uh, I'm not sure what this is in your Key is self-explanatory too. 1,000 is 10 bars of key. And then 100 is 1 bar of key. Same thing with stamina. Attack the higher the value the more damage they do most enemies usually have around like four or five attack making this shit like 15 will make it so enemies pretty much one shot you the higher the number the more damage they do same with this attack damage is your defense value making this value like five will make it so you take more damage but if you put 0.15 that is 85 percent damage reduction 90 percent damage reduction 95 percent damage reduction 99.9 percent .9 damage reduction this will completely make a character immune to anything. You cannot make it zero, it won't work. Don't try it. Our general rule of thumb is to give enemies 0.5. 50% damage reduction because you do more damage than you think. Guard attack is for great apes, ignore it. Move speed is self-explanatory. Making this point, 0 0.5 will fix any broken speed characters that will make it pretty much back to normal. Boost speed, same thing. An AI table entry. This is the AI levels and how the AI fights. Redacted NPC made an awesome list, pretty much going over all the AI numbers. Link in the description. A general rule of thumb, though, is just to use 316. 316, 315, and 400, and 401 are all good values. 345 is good if the enemy has auto-dodge. Super 1, Super 2, Super 3, and these are the enemy skill sets. 
that if you can pull up a skill ID, you wouldn't enter in. You want this first number. You don't want the hex values and you don't want the three letter code. You want this ID number right here, just the number. Do you want you enter that into here? If you want, for example, Kamehameha zero, you want Super Kamehameha as an ultimate, you make it a 5,000. You want Spirit Explosion as an evasive, you make that 10,000. That's all what that is. And that's pretty much all these three values here are completely pointless. By the way, Blast, you want to do 21080 for power. This is Rush, this is Bomb, this is Paralyzed, and this, I forget what that one is. But those are the values for Blast. That's like the charge key Blast. Awakening is self-explanatory. So that's pretty much it for all the, what this means in the column. Let's go over this player base right here. This is your character right here. Every mission has player base and the character you play as is Hum. This allows you to choose your character. Now, if you make this anything other than a home, no matter what you pick on the character select screen, you will be playing as this character. Say you make this GOK, which is Goku. If you make this GOK, when you load into the mission, no matter who you pick on the character select, you will be playing as Goku. If you make it in his seventh costume as a 100, you'll be playing as Super Saiyan Goku with a Rip D, no matter what. If you make this uh, 126, you will have Zamasu Super Soul automatically. Their Super Soul IDs online. I will probably link one in the description if I remember. And these are your stats. They're all defaulted at negative one. If you don't know what negative one means, negative one is the default value. Negative one will automatically just take their level and then just make the stats accordingly if you are not comfortable with making them yourself. Now, you will always have negative one on your stats. However, you can change the player base value stats to whatever you want. So normally it's a negative one, making this 50,000 right here will give you approximately 50,000 HP. No, regardless of your stat spread. And you can be cast or CAC, it won't matter. You can do this with everything. Your AI table is completely pointless, other than the fact that this counts for your ally. So making your ally, making your AI table entry 316 will make your allies super smart and they won't interrupt your combos nearly as much as they normally would. At making any skills in here will override your skill sets. Say you have Galagon on your X slot, making this zero will make it so you have Kamehameha no matter what. That's pretty much it. It works the same way down here. Like I said, this will completely override your stats no matter what you do. Whatever, whatever stat you put here will automatically apply in game. Remember, change this from home will automatically make it so you're playing a certain character by the way fun fact for you people who are into like roleplay and stuff like that zen xen is your xenoverse one character and xcg is your xenoverse one character with the time breaker mask transformation 400 is super villain and you can give them super armor with 193 boom i know a lot of you guys are into the photo mode stuff and your xenoverse one characters having war with each other so if you want to make a quest against your xenoverse one character go wild with this code right here so that's pretty much it and another really fast thing this right here this this here is just a bunch of like secret code you can put on your quest, but you guys can look at that on your own time. I'll leave it in the description. That's pretty much all you need to know about the characters.xqs file. This is the most complex one, I promise. Okay, there's this last thing, the QML character. This is your character, like, internal data. I'm going to quickly just blitz through all this. Battle index zero. Battle index is pretty much, this will load your character into the game. It doesn't matter what you do with your index. If you're the player base index, no matter what you do, it won't matter. Making I-12, I'm not sure what this does. Stage will show what stage you spawn on. Spawn at start is self-explanatory. AI will make it so you're human. Changing this other stuff, the human doesn't do anything, don't worry. And team A or team B, this is, you can technically be playing on the enemy team, but you'll be breaking a quest. Just always use team A. The stuff down here is pointless. This can, this is with a command called equip skills. We're not, you, you're not going to need this unless you're making a complex quest. Besides, uh, I go over a lot of this more in debt in a different video. I'll link in the description. If you want a more slower paced video, I will link it. Player two, player base, same thing. Like I said, the way the QML character works is play Player is always going to be the player, and you put a semicolon and then colon, and then you put player base. That's how you define your player. You can actually do this too, where you will still be the player, but you will be using Piccolo's like stats spread, right? Regardless of who you pick, all the stats up here that Piccolo has, you'll have too. You will have those exact same stats. So keep that in mind if you want to play as an enemy for some reason. Okay, so that's about it for characters.xqqs. So I think we made pretty good timing. I hope you guys understood everything. Remember, there's a video in the description that goes in much more in depth with this stuff. Dialogue, I'm not not going to go over i have a tutorial about that that you don't want to do that for your first mission positions are completely pointless you don't it doesn't matter what you do in here this is only like starting positions uh just make sure this just use default values pretty much if you want us now quest.xqqs now this is the second most important thing this is how you actually type up your name of your mission and rewards so this the way you make a custom name for your parallel quest is like this you make a text entry file and then the id of the mission now the first thing you should always do is change the id of your mission to something like this I will leave a, a a sample in the description. So after you type in your quest ID here, the next thing you should do is make a name for your mission. Now, you're gonna want to 
put the name of your mission to a box that looks exactly like this. Text entry, the ID of your quest, an open bracket, all the languages, and then a closed bracket. You can only, you can also, fun fact, just do your one language and the game will auto translate it to your language for every other language. So, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to do EN, which is English. So type in the name of your mission or test, whatever name you want it. And then here's the everything else. You're going to want the win conditions, the lose conditions, the description, the ultimate finish conditions, and then the ultimate finish win condition. So after typing up your name of your mission, you're going to want to put a up here, you're going to put underscore zero and then copy and paste. I'm going to keep this exact thing in the description for you guys to copy and paste. What you guys should do is go to the description, copy this, paste it five separate times, and then change this to point one, two, three. Sorry about the jump code, guys. But like I said, you should copy and paste this five separate times. So this is your name. This is your win condition. This is your lose condition. This is your description. This is the ultimate finish condition. And then this is the win condition for the ultimate finish. So name, win condition, defeat all enemies. I'm not going to type all this up right now, but lose against enemy that's the lose condition this is the description okay you guys get the gist of it by now this is the stuff you find on the map of the scouter episode don't worry about this i recommend just using something like 26 anyway if this is for dialogue by the way don't, don't worry about that number of players three this is for don't ever change this so what you should do now is you need to link these two together it's easy copy the id and then control v it just like you did before guys control v all of this you don't need anything in the tiny column that's just a comment to do one two three four five your quest details are secure use tmq 1400 as the parent and unlock requirement this is how you get the quest to show up if you make it 1400 you won't need any unlock requirements this is the time limit typing in 600 is 10 minutes this is in seconds by the way 900 is 15 minutes 3600 is one hour uh i think 6600 is two i don't remember but do 900 for 15 minutes different Difficulty ranging from zero to seven. Zero is one star, and seven is unknown stars. And you guys can figure out in between. It's pretty much one less value than the number is. So like seven stars is six stars, right? Start stage. There's IDs. You can find those online. Just for your first ever mission, just use the default stage. This is simple. There's multipliers, so be careful here. Don't make the number too insane. If you want a balanced reward, do something like thirty thousand. You'll get like a hundred thousand. Don't worry. This is all self-explanatory. XP, ultimate finish XP, and then fail XP. Zenny, same thing. TP metal. This is for your first clear. You can get extra. TP medals, and then for your second one, you for subsequent clears, you can just get like 20. This number can't go above 99. Item reward, these are the rewards. Uh, there's tons of, there's plenty of IDs out there. For skills, like, you know how you put the skills in for your character, just do like zero for Kamamiha, then there's the chance, the condition. Just honestly, don't really mess with this, but with your vanilla quest, just change it to whatever you want. Uh, I'm not even completely sure about rewards, but we'll just skim over it right now, as rewards really aren't important, this is just getting a function. So character portraits, these are the, oh, these are the stages that appear in the, like, when you press up on the D-pad on the quest card, you can put stuff here. Oh, uh, Whis, this is like, inside Whis' staff, right? It doesn't actually add the stage in, it just puts it on the quest portrait. These are the characters that'll show up in the enemy section on the quest card. So I don't know, put a Goku. Uh, costume really doesn't do anything. The only time costume ever does something is with Vegeta and supervillain characters. These don't mean anything, but doing, in the flag section, doing 0 times 200 will allow you to have an unknown timer. You know the timer section on the crowd quest and how it has like the question marks yeah that's what that is update requirement any dlc requirement any. these are just dlc locks and then these are the osts you can choose those ids for those and other places so next is the script and script one these are the same thing just don't mess with these guys But guys that you're on the last step now congratulations so what you're going to want to do is you want to open up xv2 uh, quest creator which you get by default when you download the quest patcher or the ins open up your quest creator and then type in the name of your mission or just test whatever type in the author's name find your quest file audio attached mod additional data so what you should do is make sure to save like i i just had an error i forgot to save but make sure you save all your work uh i'm not doing that right now but make sure to save all your work press save save it to your desktop as an x2 women then just install it and that's all you do you can finally play your mission now you guys are probably wondering are you going to show it? Well, that's a great question. You want to take a look at the date real quick? Yeah. You know what that means? That means the patch is not updated. Obviously, attorney, take your time, or whoever's making it, take your time with it. But I can't exactly show you the mission because I can't get mods to work. I don't downgrade my versions. So, uh, you're going to take my word for it. This quest, I swear, would work the way I designed it to work. But, like, this is just a basic mission you guys can throw together yourselves. So, not to mention that I'll just wrap up the video even sooner, because some people will just click off if they see the video is too long. So, I'm just going to end things here. I hope you guys 
This is for newcomers, by the way. For veteran quest creators, I don't know why you're watching this, unless you love my voice for some reason. I don't know, that's weird, I don't judge. But that's it. That's it. That's it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hopefully this gets one extra person to make missions, because I like seeing other people make them. And that is the video. Have a fantastic night, everybody. And adios.